The canned seafood industry is an essential part of global food production, offering convenient and nutritious options to consumers worldwide. In this video, we're going to explore how different types of seafood, like crab, tuna, oysters and shrimp, are processed in factories. Let's get into it. The first step in the crab canning process is the selection of fresh, high-quality crabs. Data consistently shows that using live or freshly caught crabs results in superior meat quality, which is crucial for maintaining the high standards expected by consumers. Partiality is given to crabs caught and processed immediately after capture, as delays can impact freshness and, consequently, the end product's flavor and texture. Before processing, the crabs undergo thorough cleaning and washing. This step is critical in removing surface contaminants, including dirt, impurities and bacteria. This is also the most important and severe process as well. Cleanliness is essential for ensuring that no unwanted particles affect the quality of the final canned product, meeting strict food safety standards. Crabs are cooked using either boiling water or steam, a process that separates the meat from the shell. Steam cooking is preferred when data shows it leads to more consistent results in meat texture. After cooking, the crabs are allowed to cool. Meat extraction follows, where workers or specialized machines separate the meat from the shell. Automation in this step improves efficiency and reduces labor costs while maintaining meat integrity. After the meat is removed from the shell, it undergoes a sorting and inspection process. This step ensures that only high-quality, intact meat is selected for canning. Any particles, fragments of shells, or damaged meat are removed at this stage. The sorted crab meat is then placed in cans, typically with brine, water or other liquids to enhance flavor and preservation. Brine concentration and liquid volume are measured carefully to maintain consistency across batches. After the cans are filled, they are sealed to prevent contamination. Sealing is followed by a sterilization process in which the cans are subjected to high temperatures to eliminate bacteria and microorganisms thus ensuring food safety. Once sterilized, the cans are cooled and labeled with relevant product details, including manufacturing and expiration dates. The cans are then packaged in cartons for distribution, maintaining traceability throughout the supply chain for quality control. As we shift from crabs to another highly prized seafood, let's explore the process involved in canning tuna, a fish loved worldwide. Tuna arrives at the cannery either fresh or frozen, depending on where it was caught. It usually comes from fishing boats or special refrigerated ships. Right away, the tuna is stored in cold areas to keep it fresh. If it's frozen, this helps maintain its nutritional value and texture. After delivery, quality control teams inspect the tuna to ensure it is in good condition. They check for any signs of damage or spoilage and make sure the fish is the right size and freshness for canning. If the tuna arrives frozen, it first needs to be thawed. Large tanks filled with water are used to make sure the fish thaws evenly, which helps preserve its quality. After thawing, the tuna is cooked in special chambers using steam pressure. The cooking times and temperatures are adjusted based on the size of the tuna. This process also helps remove extra oils and prepares the fish for the next step. Once cooked, the tuna is taken to cleaning tables where workers or machines separate the edible parts of the fish, called loins, from the skin and bones. It's important to handle the loins carefully to ensure they remain whole and intact. After cleaning, the tuna loins are placed into cans by an automated system. Depending on the recipe, the cans are filled with salt, water, vegetable broth or oil to add flavor and help preserve the tuna. Once the cans are filled, they are sealed tightly using vacuum sealing technology to remove any air. This helps keep the tuna fresh and safe from contamination. The cans then go through a sterilization process where they are heated to kill any harmful bacteria. After sterilization, the cans undergo a final quality check to ensure the tuna looks, 
tastes and feels right. If anything is off, the product is rejected. Moving on from tuna, we now focus on oysters, another important seafood in the world, especially in the UK, known for their long history and special methods of preparation, making them a delicacy worldwide. Oyster harvesting has been a part of UK history since Roman times. Although the industry has faced challenges like overfishing, pollution and bad weather, it is slowly making a comeback. Today, most oysters are harvested from specific areas along the UK's coast. The main fishing regions are on the southeast coast between Suffolk and Kent, the south coast from Chichester to Poole, and the southwest coast between the Dart and Helford rivers. These areas are essential for keeping the oyster industry alive and thriving. Oysters can grow naturally in the wild or be farmed using artificially reared seed oysters. In natural reproduction, oyster larvae settle on the seafloor during a stage called spatfall. For farmed oysters, hatcheries grow seed oysters, which are then placed in specific areas for further growth. Oyster harvesting in the UK happens in public, private and government-managed fisheries. Local authorities or private owners issue licenses and follow strict rules to ensure oysters are harvested sustainably, meaning they don't take too many and harm future populations. In the UK, oysters are typically shucked, opened and cleaned by hand. Workers use special knives to carefully open the shells and remove the meat, which is then checked to make sure it meets quality standards. Sometimes, oysters are frozen whole or shucked to make processing easier and to keep them fresh for longer. To start the canning process, the oysters are cooked, usually by steaming, and then packed in cans with brine or other liquids. The cans are then sterilized at high temperatures to make sure they are safe to eat and last a long time on the shelf. Oysters are sorted by size, with larger oysters often being more valuable. Grading is done either by shell size or weight, depending on what the market demands. When live oysters are being transported, they must be handled very carefully to avoid damage and maintain their freshness. They are usually packed in insulated containers and kept at temperatures between 1 degree Celsius and 10 degrees Celsius. This helps ensure that the oysters stay fresh and safe during storage and transportation. After learning about these coastal products, let's move to shrimp harvesting and processing, where freshness and speed matter the most. Shrimp harvesting starts by slowly draining the pond where the shrimp are raised. As the water level drops, the shrimp naturally move towards the outlet. Nets or collection systems are set up to catch the shrimp as they follow the flow of the draining water. One challenge during this process is making sure no shrimp are left behind at the bottom of the pond, as these leftover shrimp are often of lower quality. Good drainage is important to capture the shrimp quickly and get them chilled right away to maintain freshness. The design of the shrimp pond plays a big role in how efficiently the shrimp are harvested. A well-built pond has a sloped bottom which allows all the water to drain properly, leaving fewer shrimp behind. Proper drainage systems, like culverts, help keep the water flowing smoothly during the harvest. Shrimp behavior also changes based on things like water levels, moon phases, temperature, and their molting stage. They tend to move toward the pond's outlet when the water is low, so keeping the water moving during the harvest helps direct them. Shrimp start to spoil quickly at temperatures between 25 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. This is because enzymes in their organs begin to break down the tissue, especially between the head and the tail, causing blackening and loose heads. These changes make the shrimp less desirable in markets, especially in Europe. To prevent this, shrimp need to be chilled immediately after being harvested, ideally down to near freezing temperatures. Quick chilling stops both bacterial growth and the breakdown of the shrimp's tissue, keeping them fresh. Many shrimp farms now use mechanical systems to make harvesting faster and easier. These systems include pumps and dewatering towers that help move the shrimp out of the pond without harming them. 
recessed impeller pumps create water currents that guide the shrimp, and once collected, the shrimp are separated from the water in dewatering towers. From there, they are placed into insulated boxes filled with ice slurry to keep them cold and fresh. After the shrimp are harvested, they are transported in insulated containers filled with ice slurry to keep them cold. These containers are designed to protect the shrimp from damage during transport and can hold them for several days if the ice is regularly refreshed. Additional steps after harvest might include dipping the shrimp in a solution like sodium bisulfite to prevent blackening or manually removing any unwanted bycatch like crabs or fish. These extra steps help ensure the shrimp meet the quality standards required by specific markets. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content on food production and industry insights. Which seafood canned process did you prefer the most? Please tell me in the comment section. See you in the next video.